All right. How's it going, everybody? We got something special for you guys. Uh, me and Mr. Rick Sosa from uh, Skull Vikings Mexico, Mexico, excuse me, has joined me. And uh, we got some, some good news. We got some, some excitement to talk about. How you doing, Rick? I'm doing fabulous, Sean. Uh, thanks for the invite. Uh, glad to be uh, joining you here. Oh, most definitely. Thanks for thanks for coming, man. It's always good to talk uh, Vikings football with another Viking, true Vikings fan that knows what they're talking about. So it it's always fun to uh, to talk up Vikings, man. Always. You know, it was uh, a six month uh, wait for Viking football since uh, that uh, day that I don't want to remember that January twenty first uh, out in the in some stadium with a bunch of green people, but uh, it was a long wait and uh, just, just happy that uh, Viking football's back. Oh, most definitely. We, we won't, we don't need to talk about that. That's in the past. Let's, uh, let's get to this season. So we got a lot to be excited for, especially with uh, how this first preseason game went, how Kirk Cousins was looking, uh, how the running game was looking was ridiculous. And one thing that kind of surprised me uh, is the offensive line. I mean, somebody's got to open up those holes for, for Latavius Murray, and that's exactly what they did, and they gave Kirk Cousins a whole lot of time to throw, too. So I know you watched the game. What were your uh, takes on the first preseason game against the Broncos? Well, Sean, I think, you know, everybody, uh, when we were watching that first drive, uh, I think, uh, you know, I think for the most part, people were very surprised to see the work of the uh, offensive line you know, opening those big holes for Latavius. Uh, uh, you know, we, we knew there was going to be a lot of uh, uh, zone blocking uh, scheme, uh, but I, I, I was not expecting that it was going to work out that great. It specifically, uh, Murray went through uh, the right side, which, you know, I, that's the side that I was actually more concerned about with uh, uh, Rashad Hill and, and uh, Danny Sidora. So uh, I, I think uh, uh, we were all as much as in shock as probably the Broncos defense. Oh, most definitely. I mean, I was sitting there. I was actually not home. I was watching the game on my phone on a live feed. So I'm up in the desert riding ATVs, and I'm in the dune buggy, and everybody's having fun. I'm watching the Vikings game, <laughs> rattling and everything. So, uh, no, it, it looked awesome. That first drive looked awesome. Our defense did what they normally do, Viking, Minnesota Vikings defense. So, uh, I don't think we are expecting anything out of that Denver Broncos offense. Even, even though Case Keenum came back, I don't think it's a chip on the shoulder or anything like that. But, man, we if you if you could get any more excited for this Viking season, I mean, just that first drive right there, that could be a glimpse into the Minnesota Vikings' future, at least on the offensive end. Man, it's, it's something to definitely be excited about more, more, than, more, uh, more than likely. So – I tell you, uh, Sean, uh, one of the things that um, impressed me the most, uh, if you remember uh, with, with that first drive, uh, there, there was a holding penalty uh, on Cornelius Edison, the, the center, which, you know, we kind of knew he could be the, uh, the weak link, uh, you know, going off as a starter. Um, and, you know, when I saw that, that holding penalty, I was like, oh, boy, here, here we go. But they were able to convert. I mean, to me, yes, the the, the passing uh, game between Cousins and Diggs was was something to note. Uh, but the fact they were able to overcome that uh, that penalty so early in, in the game, and and you know, of course, the season first game, that was pretty impressive. Oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely. And I think that very next play, he Latavius might have ran right off of uh right off of Edison's hip on that play, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, he uh, de definitely the offense came back. They responded to that that holding penalty. So um, I mean, on the offensive side, we look. I think Kirk Cousins was what four for four for forty six yards or somewhere along those lines. Outside yeah. of Kirk Cousins, the whole quarterback group looked great. <laughs> I I was uh, very impressed. Uh, you know, I I I, ha I have to confess, I am a, I am a Kyle Slaughter. Uh, uh, fan, so I was uh, uh, very much looking forward to to see him play. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to meet Kyle uh, last December uh, at an event where he gave a, a 
uh, you know, a little bit of a talk and whatever else. So I had a chance to, to meet him and, and talk to him for a little bit. So I know, um, and, and also I talked to him in camp. I know he was uh, very much looking forward to uh, going back to Denver and, you know, kind of show that, you know, he, he still has game. And um, so I, w- I was very, very impressed with him, and I was very happy for him. Yeah, him and Trevor Simeon. I mean, Trevor Simeon out there went out there and had a pretty good game himself. But I'm right there with you on uh, Kyle Sloter. I like the kid. He's kind of a raw talent at the moment, and we're more focused on Kirk Cousins. The fan base is more focused on Kirk Cousins. But don't forget about these guys that are that in Trevor Simeon and Kyle Sloter, who we both got from the Broncos, one in the trade, and I believe we uh, picked – Kyle Slaughter off their practice squad, if I'm not mistaken, and paid him a boatload of money. So um, those guys really showed out against their former team. And I'm, man, I, I don't, it's been so long since we've had a quarterback group like this. You know, we might have had Brett Favre at the time, but uh, we, we didn't have the type of depth that we do now at quarterback, I feel. Having a guy like Trevor Simeon with the, the experience that he does have starting with the Denver Broncos, I believe he has 20-some-odd starts with them, that's very, very valuable to have as a backup quarterback. As you can see with Nick Foles and the Philadelphia Eagles, he came in, he kind of a journeyman after he left uh, his stint with the Philadelphia Eagles the first time. Comes back, he has somewhere in between 20 to 30 starts under his belt, and he ends up winning the Super Bowl for them. So it's very uh, relieving to know, okay, we got a deep group of quarterbacks and uh, really have – we don't have a lot to be worried about going into the season with the quarterback. So that's something different for us to not be worried about the quarterback position going into the season. So uh, that's that's a sigh of relief, most definitely. And you know what? Um... Uh, knock on wood, uh, obviously, uh, uh, we want to make sure that none of them uh, get hurt because, I mean, that, that the injury, uh, uh, you know, uh, risk is always there. But, you know, right now, uh, I think we're very fortunate. I do think that Trevor did have a good outing yesterday. Um, you know, obviously, uh, if, we, if we start, you know, nitpicking, um, I, I don't know your thoughts on this, but I thought, I thought the pass – uh, the guy intercepted the pass that went to uh, Tyler Conklin uh, was a little bit behind, a little, a little bit high. Um, but but yet again, I did see a, a re- replays of the touchdown pass to Rock Thomas. Uh, and um, in fact, Rashad Hill lost his man. Uh, he he uh, went around uh, uh, Rashad Hill and, and, and Simeon saw, saw that he was just about to get hit and be sacked. And he got rid of the ball pretty well to Rock Thomas. So I'll give him credit for, for that play as well. Um, but I don't know. What do you think about that pass to Tyler Conklin? It looked to me like he was a little bit behind. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I was I actually caught that play live. There's a, some of the later on in the game I wasn't able to catch live. But I did catch that pass live. And it was a little behind him. I'm, I'm more the guy that believes if the ball touches your hands, you got to catch it. But the ball was a little behind him. It was a little high. He still could have brought it in. But um, – but either way, he the ball could have been far more accurate. But I'm, like I said, I'm a guy with touch your hands. You got to catch that ball. So uh, especially when you're a rookie and you're trying to, you know, move into that that second tight end spot. So, um, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. The ball was a little high. But going back to the Rock Thomas um, touchdown that you brought up, now we're obviously we're looking for a third running back because the loss of McKinnon going to San Francisco – uh, this game, Rock Thomas was explosive. I mean, the guy was looking great. Um, I know you can't really give anybody a, a spot on the team just off one preseason game, but has he penciled himself in for that number three running back spot with the performance he had against the Broncos? You know, it's interesting because um, uh, of all the days that I was at training camp uh, last week, um, you know, when, uh, the Vikings will go out on drills, you know, I did not see a whole lot of rock Thomas. That, that was kind of interesting. In fact, in, in, uh, in my, uh, uh, Facebook page, uh, we ran, um, a little fun dynamic with the, with the fans. We were doing surveys, just kind of asking people, you know, for those, you know, spots that are for grabs, you know, uh, would you rather have, you know, this guy or that guy? So when we, when we actually, uh, um, uh, 
uh, did a survey on um, who should take the, the RB3 spot. We actually, we actually didn't have Rock Thomas in, 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 in the, in the two men survey. We had a, we have Mac Brown and, and we have Mike Boone. And when I was at camp, uh, you know, those are the two guys that, that, that I saw, you know, get more of the reps, you know, uh, with, with mostly the second team with, with the Simeon group. Um, so I, I honestly, uh, uh, did not, uh, did not see this, this, uh, Rock Thomas, uh, coming out party, uh, you know, at all that, that it was going to happen. But, but of course, you know, uh, he reminded me a lot of, uh, uh, Jared McKinnon. I don't know what your thoughts are. Yeah, no, like I said, with the, the loss of Jarek McKinnon, obviously we're looking for that, that third running back. And, I mean, I know it's preseason. I know you're playing against uh, twos and threes when he was out there. But, I mean, you, you got to look into it. The guy was, like I said, he was looking expos- explosive. He was looking like the type of running back that Jarek McKinnon is. And, I mean, it, it, it's tough to say because I know all Vikings fans, we have love for Jarek McKinnon who is actually, I think he just got an MRI on his knee. And we all know Jarek McKinnon was on and off the injury report every single week. So San Francisco went out there and gave that guy a ton of money to where now we bring in a guy, a uh, draft a guy, Rock Thomas, who I think, I believe he's out of uh, Miami, if I'm not mistaken. Comes out of Miami. And we got a guy on a, a undrafted free agent rookie contract who can do just as much as McKinnon if – he did what he was doing uh, Saturday night. So it, that's another exciting part about it is you see teams that are winning Super Bowls, they have a bevy of backs. The Philadelphia Eagles won with – I think they used four different running backs. <laughs> so – and then uh, as long uh, – with the New England Patriots, they always used a band of running backs. So if we have a solid – three running backs. We only had two last year with Latavius Murray and Jarek McKinnon, but obviously Dalvin Cook's going to get most of those reps. Latavius Murray is going to get, I would say, anywhere between 10 to 12 snaps a game. And then we might see Rock Thomas out there if he continues to do what he's doing. I mean, you can't deny the kid. And that's the beauty about preseason is just like you said, Rick, is this guy wasn't even on anybody's radar. He he wasn't even on your guys' poll for who's going to get the third string running back spot. And the beauty about preseason is that a guy like that, that doesn't have that type of recognition that, that nobody's really noticing can go out in preseason and show out and, and uh, have, I'm not sure how many receiving yards he had, but I know he had what, two, two receiving touchdowns. The guy can go yeah. out and make that type of difference and make the team, which is awesome. So now, uh, Sean, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question because uh, now, um, you know, we kind of have the reverse, meaning, so let's just assume that Rock Thomas is, is going to continue to play well and uh, um, if he hasn't uh, assured himself that RB3 spot, uh, let's, just, let's, just, let's just go along with the notion that he will. Uh, oh, obviously, we're going to need one more back for the practice squad. Uh, so now I'm going to ask you, uh, who is the odd man out, uh, Mike Boone or Mac Brown? Oh, man, that's, that's tough. I think um, I don't see why we wouldn't go with the younger guy. I like Mac Brown. Obviously, you want some experience, especially in any position uh, group. You want some experience to kind of uh, mentor those younger guys. Because let's not forget, Latavius Murray is still young. We all know Dalvin Cook's still young. Obviously, Rock Thomas is young, and then uh, Boone is, is young as well as being a rookie. So I, I honestly think if it was my choice, I'll give you two answers here. If it was my choice, I'd go with Boone, and I'd let Mac Brown walk. Because simply, I think Mac Brown's taking more up of salary than, than Boone is. And obviously, they're not going to be seeing much playing time with the depth that we do have at running back. But I think our team is going to play the smart role and say, look, let's keep a veteran guy in this uh, in this position room, in the running back room. And if he's not playing, then he's got to contribute some way, whether that be a mentor on the sidelines or at practice, whatever it be. And uh, I think 
what also comes into effect is that Mac Brown has experience with being with Kirk Cousins. He knows he knows uh, his kinks. He knows what he likes to do. He knows which way he likes to roll out of the pocket. And so I, I think that benefits him as well. So I think in our team's case, I think Boone is going to be the one left out. What about you? You know, um, I think uh, I think I'm with you there. I think you know uh, that you, you brought up a very key point: uh, the fact that Mac Brown played with Kirk Cousins. I think that that might that might be the deciding factor. I mean, I would hate to see Boone go because he's also a, a you know, like you said, is a younger back, and I think he's got a, a bright future. But I think that the little uh, X factor of uh, Mac Brown coming from the Redskins is gonna is gonna be a uh, the, what's going to decide the, the, the practice squad likely uh, uh, position for him. But now I, I want to switch gears and, and uh, kind of talk a little bit about the wide receivers. Um, you know, Laquan Treadwell, uh, you know, I had a chance to talk to him as well in camp and, you know, watch him a lot and, you know, building this great chemistry uh, with Kirk Cousins in camp. I mean, Cousins looks for him uh, a lot. I mean, I, I got to tell you, uh, if, if you – if you did not know who Stefan Diggs uh, was or Adam Thielen was, you, you would think that, that Laquan Trewell was Kirk Cousins' favorite receiver based on what you saw in training, right? Uh, but yesterday, you know, he ended up with his, his usual one catch for, you know, a cutback for seven yards or whatever, and, and he played deep into the first half. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure what to think about that yet. Uh, I know that they left him out there because they they expect more from him. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, it's, it's so tough because I don't remember him having a, a training camp like he's been having with us. And obviously he hasn't had the quality of quarterback that he has this year uh, with Kirk Cousins and the type of connection he's had with Kirk Cousins throughout camp. So you kind of have that sense of, okay, Laquan Treadwell, this is Laquan Treadwell's preseason. This is going to be his preseason where he comes out and he shines and he puts up numbers because with the depth at wide receiver that you have with Kendall Wright, who's fighting for that third wide receiver, you would think Laquan Treadwell is going to – I mean, he was out there for the majority of the game, but you'd think he'd be putting up a far lot more numbers than what he has. Like you said, one catch for – seven yards or something like that so it's it's kind of disappointing I want to keep believing in this guy and I know it's it, it has nothing to do with his work ethic or anything along those lines I don't know what it is but it's just like this hump that this guy can't get over when it comes to playing a legitimate game in the NFL I, I don't get it I want him to work out but one thing that I will give him is that you've seen on a few of those runs and just throughout the game, Laquan Treadwell is a very good downfield blocker. So a lot of people don't look at that. They look at the receiver as, oh, he needs – I mean, obviously you want him to run good routes and, and be quick and, and everything. But one thing that people overshadow is the guy's a very good blocker when it comes to the run game. So the guy's blocking 20 yards downfield for Latavius Murray. So that's one bright spot you can look at. When the guy's not catching passes or he's not getting enough looks, he's still out there blocking for his running back. So that's one positive thing I can take from Laquan Treadwell's game uh, last night. I just hope he gets some more love during, uh, during the final three preseason games. I say, hell, play him all three preseason, preseason games from start to finish and see what the guy can do. I agree. I agree. Um, you know, I, I – <laughs> You know, I don't want to. Uh, I'm I'm kind of on the fence right now of you know being 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 the naive fan that just wants to continue to give him more opportunities. But I mean, what I've seen in camp, I mean, is he he's looked so good. So you know, I want to see him, like you said, in in the rest of the uh, preseason games, and then coming up in the regular season and see uh, if uh, if it's if it's true that Kirk Cousins is going to look his way. I still believe that. You know, of course. Uh, Stephon Diggs and Thielen are going to be the primary receivers. Uh, but what about what about the other uh, hometown uh, uh, next Adam Thielen? I, th I think he doesn't like when, when people kind of refer to him as that. And when I when I had the opportunity to interview him, um, of course I did not bring that that subject because I think he likes to be known for himself. But uh, Randall Silstra, 
Um, you know, he didn't have a, a chance to play last night, which I was pretty disappointed. Uh, but he's, he's another guy that has a lot of skill. Yeah, I know uh, you were at camp. You could probably tell the people more than I can of what he's been doing in camp. But from what I've heard is the guy's having a really, really good training camp. He can run any route in the, in the, the route tree. Uh, he has very good hands. And like you said, he's kind of like an Adam Thielen type receiver. He's not the fastest guy out there. He's got pretty good size. But he's sure-handed. He's a possession receiver, and he can run every route in the route book. Um, I'm sure we will get a chance to see more of him, especially if this Laquan Treadwell thing is just not panning out and he's not showing us any signs of progression throughout the preseason. Uh, I mean, why not give one of these younger guys a chance to uh, go in there and see what they can do? I mean, it, going going into two to three games into this preseason and the following two years with Laquan Treadwell, eventually you're going to realize what you got with the guy. You know, that's enough time to say, okay, look, you, you, you have great practices, but it's, you can't get over the hump. Let's put one of these younger guys in that may not look as good in practice, but may be a game day player. You never know. So I, I think we're going to see more and more of him, and uh, he's, he's going to get a lot more reps during the preseason, I believe. You know, uh, I was at the uh, uh, night scrimmage uh, a week ago on Saturday. And, uh, and yeah, Silstra did have a very good game. And also, well, I mean, he, he did far more than Treadwell. So yeah. let's, let's, start, let's start with that. Uh, but I, you know, I think that uh, one of the things he uh, mentioned to me when I uh, had a chance to uh, interview him and, and talk to him, you know, he, he came from a D3 school. So he came from uh, Concordia Moorhead, which is, you know, it, it's, even on the D3 ranks, uh, you know, you're not talking, you know, anything spectacular, right? Uh, so the similarities to, to Adam Thielen, al although I do believe that the Mankato, Minnesota State Mankato, is a, it's a better football program. Uh, but the fact that he had to grind it and, you know, had to go to the CFL, I think that was very good for his development in, and in terms of uh, becoming a better route runner uh, and also for his work ethic, uh, which I think is it's what's taken him th this far. But, but I asked him the question. I said, you know, Brandon, I said, you know, for a lot of people, I said, you know, I, I had a chance to watch some of your videos uh, with, the, with the Eskimos. Uh, but for the people that, you know, really don't know you very well, what, what is your route running specialty? What is your skill set? And, you know, he said he'll run anything. Uh, but if he were to pick something that, that he, not to say he would prefer, but he, was, he thought he was good at, it was, it was the high point. So that in itself, you know, it's so, it's so, so similar to Adam Thielen. So I am really hoping that uh, if it turns out to be anything like Adam, um, that's going to be that's going to be really good. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to have two Adam Thielens on the team. I'll tell you that one is great. But if you can get two, go ahead and take them. <laughs> now, um, I'm going to shift back to training camp a little bit. Obviously, like you said, you've been at training camp for the past couple of weeks. You were there at the night scrimmage. Um, and I, I just want to ask you, for, for people that weren't able to attend training camp that maybe you, won't, you wouldn't be able to see in the preseason games or aren't, aren't able to see in the news articles, what is kind of one thing that stood out for you or that's kind of been eye-opening, not necessarily a player, but maybe uh, the, the way the defensive line is working together, somewhere along those lines to where it kind of, it, it's been a standout for you in training camp? You know, uh... If I were to, you know, pick one thing, um, you know, there was there was a, a, a report out there of a of a conversation, or you know, kind of got passed to me from from another uh, reporter here in town, um, a conversation between the cousins and and Zimmer. Um, you know, apparently, you know, there th there were many times where where our defense. Uh, intercepted uh, Kirk Cousins in, in several drills and, you know, the defense held them up in the red zone and whatever else. So I think Cousins, uh, you know, was a little frustrated. So, so he did go to Zimmer and said, you know, coach, uh, you know, I, I just don't understand why, um, you know, uh, when, when I, when I do, when I do my check downs, you know, it's like, it's like the defense knows exactly what I'm going to do. It's like they anticipate and, and, you know, they either, you know, they're, they're going to disrupt what I do. They're going to intercept me or they're just going to, you know, cause all kinds of uh, uh, problems for me. So, but I want to 
asking for a specific play. You know, he was referring to a specific play in which in which he went through his progressions, and then needed a check down. And and they, I mean, it was a, I don't know if it was a Bar or Kendricks or somebody. It was like right there on the instant. And he and he told Zimmer, says, Coach, how how is it possible that they knew I was going to do that? And and you know the 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 best part of the conversation is what Zimmer responded. Zimmer said, "You know what? Uh, that's not even that's not even not even the play the coverage that we told them to do. We we called for some different, and them themselves on their own, they they know each other so well, and they've been playing together for so long that with with a with a specific signal, that is typically either Harrison Smith." That gives it in the backfield, or or is either Kendricks or Barr, uh, you know, in in the middle as as the linebackers, um, with a with a simple signal, the, the entire unit knows exactly what it means, and, and 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 Zimmer said, you know, that's not even what we said, what you told them to do. They they switch it themselves and, and they they adjust, and you know that's just kind of what they do. So to me, I I was you know that kind of left me in awe because. Uh, you know, I, I thought about a few things. I thought about, okay, well, you know, we got to do whatever we can to keep Anthony Barr because, you know, that's part of keeping that core, you know, together. And second, um, you know, when you have that situation with, with – then you add the noise level at U.S. Bank Stadium. You know, I, I remember the game against the Rams last year so so well because, uh, you know, I, 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 I heard – just about enough on, on the national media how great the Rams were and how great Jared Goff was and how great Tar Gurley was and, you know, the, the unstoppable Rams. I got to tell you, uh, I was at the, at the game at U.S. Bank Stadium and, and Jared Goff looked like he was in complete panic. Like, like, like Paxton, Paxton, poor Paxton Lynch looked like last night. Uh, Jared Goff looked like he just wanted to, like, that game to be over fast and he wanted to get back in the team boss, the hotel, and back to California. I, no, I'm right there with I was actually at that game last year as well. So I was right there with you. The place was rocking. That was my first Minnesota Vikings game being at a Minnesota Vikings game. And I couldn't have picked the most perfect game to go to. And the funny thing about it was when I got the tickets, I got the tickets thinking, oh, the Rams aren't going to do anything this year. This I want to make sure I go to my first Vikings game and it's a win. So luckily it was a win, but going leading up to that game, we all know the Rams were looking great. They had the number one offense in the league and they came into Minnesota and a lot of people picked the Rams and were being very, very disrespectful. And I mean, I couldn't compare it to another game, but that place was loud. And outside of that first drive where the Rams pretty much had their way with our defense driving down the field, after that, they weren't to be found. Like you said, Jared Goff was back there with happy feet. He wanted the whole thing to be over. He stepped into a freaking uh, coliseum for, for a battle to the death. So I do remember that game, and that was ridiculous. But that story that you, that you said at training camp with Kirk Cousins going up to Mike Zimmer and asking him, like, hey, what, what's going on? How do you know our plays? The guy's right there waiting on it. That – amazes me that's ridiculous and it like you said it goes back to these guys playing together for so long having that rapport having that chemistry to where I don't even have to say anything I can give you a look and you know what it is and that's why Anthony Barr is so vital at keeping on this team not only because of his talents which are, are obvious but the chemistry and the rapport that he has with everybody else on this defense I think we're going into, what, year five with most of our key contributors on the defensive end staying on, the, on, on our squad. So by, by you saying that, I had no idea about that story. I'm sure a lot of people had no, idea, had no idea about that story. But that just shows not only the, the strength of our defense, but that also shows the, the want and the, the – craving of being a winner and wanting to win from Kirk Cousins saying I'm gonna go up to my head coach the defensive not the defensive coordinator but runs the defense I'm saying look what <laughs> what can I do on this play because there's nothing open I put through all my reads my check down wasn't even open the guy was already waiting on, on, on it for me how can I get better and 
I mean, he, he didn't help him much. He said, hey, that wasn't my call. Harrison Smith called something in the back, or they changed that, and they were ready for your play. So that that freaking blows my mind. That was that was really, really dope. I like that right there. But, um, no, that, that shows the continuity that our whole team has at this point, that it's not offense versus defense with our team. It's, hey, how is our offense going to make our defense better, and how is our defense going to make our offense better? And I'm sure you've seen that camp as well. Obviously, our defense has been, been getting the best of the offense. But there's been some plays where Stephon Diggs has beat, beat Xavier Rhodes deep. Uh, Thielen has caught a few passes. Like there, There's – Laquan Treadwell had, what, four touchdowns in the red zone uh, on the the seven-on-seven seven drill. So, there, there's a lot going on in camp to where our – if you couldn't think our defense could get better, well, they're getting better. <laughs> Not just with the addition of Sheldon Richardson, but practicing against a quarterback like Kirk Cousins isn't going to hurt you. No, I, I, I agree. And, and you know, just to kind of piggyback on that, um, you know, I, I thought of something else, too, in, 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 this, in the same topic. So my, my group, you know, down in Mexico, I mean, they, they're all, they're all uh, before I went to camp, they're all, uh, you know, kind of panicking with offensive line. You know, the fact that, you know, they felt like that it wasn't uh, – um, we didn't we didn't get a, a lot of reinforcements there, so so they were you know really asking me to kind of take a good look at them and you know kind of pick my brain on what I saw and whatever else. And you know and, and you know after I went to to the camp a few days, you know I came back uh, to them and I said you know what I I feel I feel less preoccupied. I, I still did not expect what we saw yesterday uh, in Denver uh, in terms of their performance, but I was I was a little bit less preoccupied because when I was at camp. I was able to realize that, you know, when you go against a defensive line of our caliber, you know, with Hunter, Richardson, and Griffin, and so forth, when you go against those guys day in and day out in practice, that only makes you better. So our offensive line, had, they had to work their butts off to be able to, to hold those guys up. And, you know, in a lot of cases, you know, maybe they weren't able to. So I guess in a nutshell, I would say that, uh, you know, that, that, that little uh, exchange between Cousins and Zimmer, it kind of seemed to me like, you know, Cousins was, Cousins, it was like, Cousins was looking forward to play another defense because I think he was, I mean, he was just like having it. Um, and maybe outside of Jacksonville or, I don't know, maybe the Eagles, maybe he's looking forward to play actual regular games against, against defenses that are not as good. Oh, most definitely. And it, what's funny about the, what you said with the offensive line going up against our defensive line, it's kind of like uh, baseball when they put the donut on the bat and the bat's real heavy. And then when it's time to step up to the plate, they take that donut off and that bat feels real light after that. So you're practicing against a defense, a defensive line that you can't double team anybody on this defensive line. You can't, uh, you can't double team uh, Sheldon Richardson. Now you got Daniil Hunter on the outside. You can't double team Daniil Hunter because now you got Sheldon Richardson at the three technique. You can't uh, double team uh, Linval because we have Everson and so on and so on. So they go up against this defensive line every day. They're going to step into these games and say, okay, there's not too many defensive lines that are as good as the guys we go up against every single day in practice. So that definitely benefits our offensive line. Although I'm sure our defensive line does probably get the best of our offensive line during practice, but but no, that's that's just one more thing to be excited about. Uh, obviously, the one thing that everybody's worried about is that offensive line, but I think our coaching staff is so fundamental fundamentally sound that they're going to key on that offensive line, make sure that offensive line is flat out ready to go to where we know our receivers are going to be good. We know our, our quarterback's going to be good. We know our defense is going to do what they're going to do. Let's focus on this offensive line and make sure we're set, because if we have that offensive line set, the sky's the limit for this team. And that's for multiple years down the road. That's not just this year. Let's not forget, I can go over the, the whole bundle of names that we have signed through the 2020 season. But... <laughs> People look at this and say, oh, this is the year. This may be the year. Don't look at it just this may be the, be the year. This may be the next franchise because this New England Patriot train is running out of gas. 
And somebody's got to step up and take that torch. And who's it going to be? I think we are in prime position to take control of that, along with the Eagles, along with the Rams. There's a few teams that are in position to do that. But as a Vikings fan, I, I, I don't see why you wouldn't be excited for this team in the next three to five years to come. I mean, this, this thing is really going. It's really taking off. It's taking off fast, and let's just hope and pray we get through this preseason healthy into this regular season 100%. And, uh, man, make a run at these playoffs because, God willing, we have a tough schedule, a very, very tough schedule. But with the talent we have on the team and everything, I think we're going to do some very, very great things this year. Uh, and I, I just wanted to leave that at that. I'm sure you got a few things you want to leave with the people before we uh, hop off here. and then. Uh, who knows? We might do a, a few more podcasts as well, uh, see how they go. But well, what did you want to leave uh, all the Vikings fans with before we get out of here? Well, for for my final thoughts, uh, you know, I I want to make sure we we give some love to the special teams. Uh, you know, on the kicker uh, situation, I do feel that you know Daniel Carls. It, well, let me let me backpedal. I don't think uh, Kai Forbat has done anything to hurt himself. Um, so it's not really that. It's, it's just that I do believe that Daniel Carlson has done a little more to help himself, and especially, uh, you know, with his performance last night. Um, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not calling that race yet, uh, but I, I am saying that uh, Carlson is probably leading by a nose. So I'll, I'll close with that. Yeah, that, that's one thing we need to uh, look on. I mean, that, that's a tough one for me because with Kai Forbath, he's a veteran kicker. He's been in these battles before. And let's not forget, he won us that game against the Saints last year before Drew Brees drove his team down for, to take the lead with a field goal. So let, let's not forget that Kai Forbath has come through for us in some very, very key situations. And what's very important for a kicker is that he has a short memory. So if he goes out there and misses a kick earlier on in the game, you can bet your butt that later on in that game, he's going to do whatever it takes to knock that field goal through. So that is a very, very interesting battle to look forward to. And uh, we actually have the uh, joint practices with the Jaguars this week, right? Are you are you going to uh, be attending training camp for that? Uh, yes, that's correct. The Jaguars are coming Tuesday and Wednesday. I will not be there, but I'm going to be at the game on Saturday. Okay, awesome. Awesome. So I'm sure we'll see uh, a bunch of info from you on that. And it, it, for the followers, if you guys don't already, go out and follow uh, Skull Vikings Mexico. So go out of your way. It's really, really cool, especially if you speak Spanish. I don't speak much Spanish, but it's very informational. There's a lot going on with you guys. You guys are growing very fast. So I've been keeping an eye out on you guys. And if you don't already, from my page as well, go and follow Skull Report. We're actually growing really big, too. So uh, two very, very good sites that are getting, you know, big right along with the, our team looking great. So if you don't already, go and follow those pages. Uh, follow my guy, Rick Sosa. And we will – I'm sure we'll get on and do a couple more videos, too, for the people – you know, it's always fun. So whenever we have time, I'm sure we'll hop on and, and, and do something together. Excellent. I'll, I'll be happy to. And uh, just quickly for our page, uh, we're trying to do a little bit of a crossover, meaning we have some stuff uh, in Spanish and we do put a little little stuff out there in English. So to be able to to uh, appeal to uh, uh, the English speaking uh, fan base, too. Oh, most definitely. Awesome. Awesome. So that's going to wrap it up for us, guys. I want to thank uh, Mr. Rick Sosa from Skull Vikings, Mexico, to come on here with me. Uh, I am SK, and uh, it was a pleasure, man. We will talk soon, most definitely. Take care. All right.